Okay, let's do it. Let's go. What are we talking about today, Sarah? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try and take over the world. I'm a nerd. Um, welcome to Tuesdays with Sarah on Vocal Magic Coach. Um, we are talking today about the natural voice because uh, it's been a theme this week. I posted a, a post about it the other day. Uh, so many of my new students are wanting to know that. Like, how do I stop copying people? And how do I find what feels true to me in my voice? And how do I, uh, how do, I do what I want to do instead of just do something else? But the problem with that whole conversation is we are a mosaic of everything we've ever heard. Like, you can't not be that if you're a human, right? You didn't just pop up out of nowhere as a completely unique being. You were raised by people. You listened to music growing up. You saw art. You are influenced every moment of every day by everything you've ever experienced to get really deep <laughs> but like that's the truth and so this idea of having this totally unique sound all the time is almost impossible right it's that we have this false idea that so many of these pop stars out there have this magical thing that we don't have that makes them so recognizable. And yes, they do. They have, oh dear, poor connection. I don't know what that means. Um, they do, you know, are, like when Ariana comes on the radio, you can tell it's Ariana. When Adele comes on, you can tell it's her. When Chris Stapleton comes on, you can tell it's him for sure. But that is, I think, only a consequence of them just being okay with whatever they have coming out of them at all times right and that is such a different vibe than what we do all the time as amateurs and that is worry that you're sounding too much like somebody else <laughs> like to them sure they have influences and everything but instead of worrying that they're sounding too much like ariana ariana is worrying that she's used to worry that she sounded too much like Kristen Chenoweth or that she used to sound too much like another one of her idols. Um, but guess what? When you let go of all that, you stop trying so hard. And when you stop trying so hard, the things that come out of you may sound like the people who are influencing you, but they also are coming out of a different instrument, right? So they're automatically more unique because they're coming out of your snowflake of a voice. You don't have to do anything to make that happen. You just have and were born with this magnificent machine that has its own vocal fingerprint magically, right? So even if you are imitating Adele and you're trying to sing an Adele song, it doesn't mean that you are not singing in your natural voice. You know, I don't know what's happening with my connection. I'm sorry. Um, so there's a whole lot of reframing that we need to do in this place of trying to become your own singer and the fear comes in real strong as we know right the fear that somebody's going to be like oh you just are trying to sound like Adele who are you right you're you're just a copycat and nobody wants that of course but also the person that's going to say that to you do you really want to believe what they think anyway <laughs> you know like unless that person is uh, the person that is gonna uh, make you the biggest star on the whole planet, which honestly, that is kind of overrated as well nowadays. Like we don't have to always listen to the Simon Cowells of the world anymore. We can do things on our own without the gatekeepers of the record industry. Um, and most of us are not even close to that level anyway. So we're doing the gatekeeping ahead of the time so that they don't do it for us, right? We are shutting ourselves down from trying anything because we're worried that the gatekeepers are gonna say, you're just trying to be a copycat, you know? So this idea of worrying that you're just imitating other people and that you're not singing with your own voice, 
is not true. It's just not true. You are, you have your own mechanism. You're not singing with somebody else's mechanism. That means even if you are trying to do an Adele like riff, you are still using your own natural voice because you have this mechanism that is, has its own fingerprint and it has its own timbre, it has its own tone. You can change tone to sound more like Adele if you want to, but that doesn't mean you're not singing with your natural voice, right? And the other part of this conversation is yes, we can ease off a little bit of the imitation when we want to. But this is how everybody in the mom learns to sing. This is how I learned to sing is from imitating the freaking Spice Girls and Britney Spears and in sync. Like, I'm dating myself. I am an elder millennial. Now you know. Sorry. Um, but that's how we all learn to sing, is we listen to our favorite singers, and we try and singing, try singing what they're singing, and we learn a whole lot, hopefully, about tone and pitch and rhythm and all the things that we need to put together to be a singer. But that doesn't come from just nowhere. It's not just a random just download from the universe. It comes from imitation, just like how you learn to speak. You learn to speak from whoever taught you, your parents or your guardians or whoever was around speaking around you when you were a kid. You just imitated them. Like, you didn't learn your language from nothing. You are an imitator. You are a mosaic of all the people that you've ever heard speak and you took stuff from different people, and you took stuff from books you read, and all that stuff. So why put all that pressure on your singing as well? So the moral of the story is, yes, we can play with tone so that you feel like you are a little more on the spectrum of uh, not trying to imitate somebody as much. And usually that comes from going back into your speaking life. Now, if you're an opera singer, this is different advice right this is this is a different direction but because you're almost never speaking with your same speaking voice or singing with your same speaking voice when you're when you're singing opera or legit classical stuff you're always singing in your falsetto in your head voice in whatever you want to call it um but the majority of us ah, sorry about sorry about my connection i don't know what is happening i may have to stop and come back on um I, the majority of us are doing musical theater. We're doing pop, we're doing rock, we're doing folk, all that stuff. That is so much more closely related to our, speak, our speaking voice than any of you think, right? Like if I'm singing a big belty note, all I'm doing is just trying to talk to my friend across the playground. That's the same skill, right? I'm not doing anything other than what my body already knows how to do, and that is project sound over a long distance. You've been doing it your whole life, I'm guessing. And if you can get back to that and bring that skill back into your singing, you are going to be golden. That's really all your natural voice is, is you not trying to put yourself into a box that you do not belong in. And we do that when we're speaking all the time, right? Like when you're speaking, you most likely feel like you're talking in your own natural voice, right? You don't feel like you're imitating anybody unless you are a voice actor or doing something on purpose. Um, to talk like somebody else. Um, but most of us, when we talk, at least, you know, when we're in situations that we feel the most comfortable, when you're talking to your loved ones, you feel like you're talking in your own real voice. So we're going to bring as much of that feeling, that ease, that trust in your voice as possible into our singing. And that relates to sometimes maybe feeling like you might be yelling. And that's okay because guess what? It's the same voice. It's the same mechanism. The only difference is sometimes when we yell, sing, we put too much pressure in here. And when we try to get a sound across a distance when we're speaking, we do it from underneath here. So really the most important thing I can tell you physically to bring yourself back to your natural voice is to feel into your abs, get your foundation really strong, take your belly breaths so you're in, uh, not uh, over engaging your abs too early on. Um, and by that, I mean, when you're taking your inhale, release your lower abs and your side abs, your obliques. So that when you do go to sing, they have their full uh, range of motion to help you with that foundation of your sound. It's coming up from underneath here instead of not having any engagement to go. And so then that pressure comes into here. And so you feel like you're overdoing it in here. So 
the physical thing I can tell you to find your natural voice is to take your belly breaths. Sing from the gut, sing from your abs, engage lower, send that connection down into the ground. So you're connecting your top and your bottom halves of your, of your vocal mechanism. And then bring the ease of speaking that you have into your singing. So for example, if I'm singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, like there's many different ways I can do it. One may be more imitating than another, right? So if you're trying to get to this place of not imitating and you learned how to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star from Adele, your first go at it is probably going to sound like a little more like Adele, right? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, right? That nice dark back tone that she has. But that's not how I would speak it, right? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I normally talk much more bright and much more forward. So if I want to sound like more myself, I am going to bring it closer to where I would speak it. And honestly, the way to do that is just speak it in slow motion. It's my favorite thing to do with people. Like, twinkle, twinkle. Because then you hold out your sounds more and then they become notes. It's magic. Speaking is slow motion singing. So try this with me if you want to. Just speak it how you would normally speak it. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. But maybe add a little bit of melody to it, right? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. And I am right here. How I would normally speak. I'm not trying to be Adele. I'm not trying to pull it back and be a more, oh, more full-bodied singer. I'm just going right here. And sometimes I don't like that I'm so bright. But that's okay. That's not what we're doing right now. Luckily, we can change it at any moment, right? And it's all you. I'm going to keep saying that. It's all your natural voice. But if we're trying to bring speaky feel into singing, we can just lengthen in slow-mo, right? So let's try it. Twinkle, twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle. now I'm just slow motion speaking and now I can just add a little more musicality a little more flow a little more transition magic in there and then I'm singing I mean I was already singing just now totally counts you were singing when you were speaking earlier just more speaky singing this is all a spectrum you guys are seeing hopefully it's not boxes that you fit into it's am I 10% singing and 90% speaking or am I 50% singing and 50% speaking who knows? It's only for you to say in your own head. So let's try adding a little more musicality to it. But I'm still, the foundation of it is slow motion speaking. Okay, ready? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I'm adding a little bit of vibrato. I'm adding a little bit of push and pull. Adding a little bit of flow, a little bit of uh, loudness and softness. Just feeling more of a flow, right? It's like you're slow motion speaking, but on the waves, right? You're gonna go back and forward. You're gonna find some looseness to it. And that's it, you guys. That's that's how to find your natural voice if that even exists, right? Because you already have your natural voice and whoever you're imitating, it's not gonna sound exactly like them because it's a whole different beautiful mechanism that you were born with. So don't worry so much about if you are singing in your own natural voice because you automatically are but see if you can play with that spectrum of okay am i trying to 100 percent imitate this person or how would i say it if i were just speaking it right how would i pull back a little bit from that and make up something on my own right and this is where playing around comes in i talk about the the sandbox a lot it really matters if you give yourself sandbox time because then you start to come up with new things, new runs, new phrases. How would you phrase it as opposed to this other person? Oh, I'm so grateful for that. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> that, makes, that means so much to me. Um, uh, it really, yeah, it, it, it makes a difference if you start to see your own voice differently. You know, that's why I do this because it took a long time for me to see my own voice differently and to stop putting so much dang pressure on it 
to be perfect and to be my own thing and to be blah, 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 blah. Because all these things, these boxes that we've been told to put ourselves in, the genres that we have to stay in, they're all bullshit. <laughs> it's all bullshit, you guys. It's all a spectrum. And you get to choose where you fit on that in any given moment. That's the beauty of the human voice, you know. This is why voice actors have a job. Because they can choose how much they are speaking in their own voice and on this spectrum getting closer to the character right if you ever watch live videos of voice actors in the studio watch them it's freaking fascinating they can turn it off in any at any second and so can you if you practice right like if i'm trying to be spongebob i am gonna not go back here where my voice is i'm gonna go even more bright and even more forward and i'm gonna slowly and surely get more bright and forward and high up and my legs is going to come up and I'm going to be Spongebob. Ah, right? I'm just terrible at imitating. Uh, but we all can do it to a certain extent. You know? So play more is what I'm saying. Just when you're in your car, when you're feeling safe, you don't have to do this in front of people, I tell you. <laughs> like, try just feeling like 5% more Spongebob then you do. You don't have to go full SpongeBob. <laughs> just 5% more SpongeBob, right? Just a little teeny little bit at a time. And then maybe the next time you go 10% SpongeBob, right? Or whoever, whatever character you're trying to, to play around with. Or if you're not trying to do a character and you're just trying to find a little more uh, maturity in your sound, maybe go towards that Adele sound, right? She's got this deep, dark, uh, right? Sound to her voice. All it is is changing the shapes that's happening in here. And we were, like I said, we were born imitators. So you already know how to do this, right? Like, just pretend to be Patrick Starr, right? If we go to the opposite end. Uh, uh, like, look what my legs are doing. Uh, hey, SpongeBob. Right? That's all it is, is just a creating a longer space in here, a longer pharynx to make a deeper, darker sounding sound. Um, and so it's all a part of you but you have all of these little corners that you've probably never played in. And so if you play more to the extremes of your voice, you'll start to find out what is possible. And then hopefully you will realize what I know all along is that you are already using your natural voice this whole time. And you don't have to work so hard to get there. Like, yes, you probably started off imitating somebody because that's how we learn. And there's no shame in that. Zero, zero, zero. And the most important thing for you to know is that you can change that at any moment. You already have your natural speaking voice. Find the space in between that where you're naturally singing. Maybe you learned how to sing by listening to Ariana Grande for years and years and years. Find the space in between Ariana and you. Play in there. See if you can go back and forth. Okay, now I'm Ariana. Now I'm myself. Now I'm Ariana. Now I'm myself, right? And there's a gray area in between. And you can play with this shapes and with uh, tones and with colors and textures of your voice without even knowing what the heck I'm talking about. You could probably do what I'm saying, right? Do your best Ariana impression right now. Uh -huh, right? You can do that. However, we don't often let ourselves be ridiculous and stupid and, <laughs> and play and make silly sounds like that, right? So the other thing I always tell people is like, go play with a kid, go play with a baby, see what different sounds you end up making, and then focus on how you made that sound. Do it again when you're singing. It's magic. I can tell you, we, for some reason, we let ourselves make all kinds of different sounds in our voice. We use our entire vocal spectrum when we're playing with a baby to make them laugh. We will do anything possible. <laughs> and then we come back into singing and we're like, nope, there's this one sound. I got to make this one sound. Otherwise it's wrong. Right? It's dumb. It's bullshit. We do so many stupid things. We put so many stupid layers on our voice. And none of it is necessary. So highly, highly recommend playing around with that. Just what if you said, oh, this is already my natural voice. You know, what if you said, what if I don't have to work so hard? You know, how would that feel in your voice? How would that feel in your body? Next time you go to sing, also, remind yourself of that. When you get frustrated, when you feel that gremlin voice coming in real strong, like, oh, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong, that sucks. 
switch around in yourself. Write yourself a sticky note. Put it wherever you sing that says, what if I'm doing it right? What if I let go a little? What if I take a, big, a bigger breath? <sighs> See what that does for me. You know? I don't do voice acting. Uh, that's not where my, uh, most of my time has been spent. Most of my time has been spent in singing. However, I bet it'd be fun. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and like I said, if I, you know, I, I bet if I went to a voice acting coach right now, they'd be like, yeah, just go practice stupid voices. <laughs> just like I just told you. Um, and then you get better, right? Over time, you just get better and better if you practice and you spend time, more time in that, in that area. But, um, I think voice acting is, sounds super fun and I would love to do that. And I have some students that are interested in it too. And I just keep saying, yeah, go do it. Go just for fun. Go find somebody with, with a microphone and practice recording yourself and see what you can learn about your own voice and what it can do. And I don't know, go audition for something. Why not? There's 8 billion things that need voice actors all the time. So why not go pitch yourself to one of them, right? All of us have the natural ability to do different voices. It's just how often we let ourselves loose enough into doing that and sharing it with people. No, it's totally fine. Um, I'm so glad you're here, Sky. Welcome. Uh, I feel really corny, but I wanted to see how you find such confidence in sharing your voice. Honestly, it's just many years of practice. And this is why I, I say this thing about the sandbox time, because this is what I did. Like years and years of singing in my car. I'm serious. Years. Like it, I was just as scared a long time ago when I was first putting my voice more out there, when I was first taking voice lessons, um, when I was first um, taking guitar lessons and writing songs and performing in front of people I knew. That's a scary thing to do, man. I was so dang nervous. However, I wanted it bad enough that I was like, well, I got to do it sometime and I'm not going to wait longer. So I'm just going to do it nervous and see what happens. And that is, I just kept doing that over and over again for many years until my comfort zone expanded a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. And now, now it's a lot bigger in regards to singing. However, I have plenty of gremlins about other parts of my life, right? I have plenty of relationship gremlins. I have plenty of money gremlins. I have plenty of other things that I still am not confident at. But singing, I've done enough. I've just put in the hours that my comfort zone has slowly started to expand every time I did it. The first time I sang in a musical on stage, I was freaking out. My body was uh, like, what, what's the word? My body was rebelling against me. I was so uncomfortable and sick. And then I did my second musical and I was like, oh, <laughs> this is not a thing anymore. I've done this before. And then my body was a little more calm in that situation. And then when I played a lead for the first time, you know, you just keep leveling up and things become integrated into your comfort zone. So whatever the goal is that you have right now, whether it's just sharing your voice with one person or whether it's auditioning for something or being in a band, wherever that next little teeny step is on the way to that, do that. Don't try and do the whole big thing right away because then your nervous system will freak out and will turtle you back into where you came from. Find the like half a step that is next for you. So if that is singing in front of one person, go sing in front of a kid or something, right? That's half of that step. Go sing in front of your dog. Go sing online in front of somebody if that feels a little more comfortable. Whatever that works out to be for you, take that first little mini step. And then that mini step will now be your new reality, your new comfort zone, right? Oh, I did that already then your nervous system will feel like uh, a little more acclimated to that. You're still going to be nervous. I'm not saying the nervousness goes away when you do that, but it may go from a 10 to a 9, and then the next time may go from a 9 to an 8. Just saying that's how, that's how things work with the nervous system. We have to take it little bit by little bit. And then over time, it becomes a 3 and a 2. I've had somebody in Vocal Magic who was so nervous the first time he sang for me, for like the first six months in private sessions, he would like freak out and be so nervous. He would, he had like a name for it. He'd call it the jellies. 
because he got so nervous when he was singing in front of me. At the end of Vocal Magic, which is like eight to nine months later at that point, he busked at a coffee shop. No fear. Just, I mean, there was nervousness still for sure, but he did it. No problem. Can you imagine? I had somebody else who was in Vocal Magic. She started and she would get so nervous. She like barely could talk, had such you know your body has had all these reactions you know like you get so sweaty you get so shaky you can barely get through it but you want it enough that you do it and then by the end of that six months she was like oh my nervousness is like a two or three now i was like what how is this a thing it's amazing incredible do you help with finding your speaking voice um yeah i mean it's all the same thing um, I primarily work with singers, but I also uh, have worked with public speakers in the past. It's just where my most of my expertise is at is with singing, so it's mostly where I put my time. Um, and that's what my, my program is about, is for singers for vocal magic. So, um, yeah, let me know what else I can do for you. But I got to go. Uh, I have some sessions to do. But thank you all for being here. I really appreciate you. Um, it really makes a huge difference when you are here and asking questions and I thank you very much um yes oh yes 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 uh yeah uh, I sang at the Apollo recently can't stop over analyzing how I was perceived what do you do to stop assuming the worst of others perception my goodness that is a question for the ages all I can do is tell you that it's a gremlin and it's not real there's a gremlin that we have to fight with and make friends with before you sing and then that same gremlin is going to come back stronger and louder after you sing because it's like, oh, hey, remember that thing that I told you was dangerous that you shouldn't have done? I'm going to tell you all the things that you did wrong so you don't take that risk ever again and so you don't die. So you stay safe and in this little bubble and in this little cave with me for the rest of my life. That's what, that's how petty and stupid your gremlin is. And remember, this is not you. This is not your voice. It's an amalgamation of all the negative voices you've ever heard, right? So... Keep in mind, if you can, when you hear those negative voices come in after a performance, say your grandma's name out loud. So mine is George. And he says, you're wrong. You did it wrong. You suck. You didn't do enough. You need to do more, blah, blah, blah. And I, when I hear that voice, especially after the performance, my goodness, it's so loud. I'm like, George, thank you for your help. I don't need to listen to you. I don't listen to bullies. Go away. You don't have to say anything else. Just F off. Right? Literally imagine shoving him outside of the door and slamming the door. Go hang out in the car. I'll see you later. He's always going to come back. That's what he does. He's very good at his job. However, when you put yourself out of your comfort zone, your nervous system is going to do everything in its power to red alert you into not taking a risk ever because that is what it understands as what is safe because it does not know what is outside of its own experience. So if it doesn't have experience with it, if you do something new and big and exciting, it's going to freak out, right? So keep that in mind. It's just a normal, natural reaction. It's just your gremlin. It's a broken record in your head. Just be like, F off, whatever your name is. See you in five minutes. And then do that again <laughs> when it comes back in five minutes. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you. Not taking risks is very risky. Indeed. That's, that's good life advice. Thanks, Joe. Um, I'm going to head out, but I just wanted to let you know that if you are here and you enjoy what I do, I do have a course coming up. It's not a course, it's a program. It's a hybrid group program and it is magical. It's much more magical than a normal course is. It's called Vocal Magic. It's a six month program. We do live group sessions. We do private sessions. We do video lessons. We do performances. We do uh, all the things. And these are the people that I was talking about. Like this is the kind of transformation you can see in that program. So if you're curious, you know what to do. Da -da -da go do the thing and uh the only way to uh register is to book a call with me because i don't let people in who i don't have not met before um so let's meet let's chat it's totally no charge and um you have until july 5th to book that uh just do it <laughs> that's all i have to say just do it i'm not scary i promise um i just want to know you want to hear your voice i want to see if you are fit for the program and if you're, if you have a, a little inkling of like, yeah, I feel like this is for me, just go book a call. There's literally nothing to lose. 
And then if you don't end up working with me, totally fine. You'll probably still learn something. You'll have some homework to do. I would give everybody homework, no matter if you if you pay me or not. Um, sorry, not sorry. So, yep, yeah, just do it. And I'll see you soon. I love you very much. Bye.